Hello everyone, this is Allie from MCAT Mastery. Today I'm going to be going over some bio biochem strategies that helped me to score a 131 on this section. So we'll just be going over them in brief for this video. To start, I'll just mention them in general and then I'll dive into each one specifically. So a lot of this, I used a lot of strategies, but a few of them that I really focused on, especially for my retake when I was thinking, okay, how can I strengthen this section even more, were to use the passage, which sounds really simple, but I'll get into it. Um, understand the format of the bio biochem section. Think of every concept as interconnected. Use mnemonics. And finally, tackle the graphs by axis, axes and really just work on that. So starting with using the passage, bio biochem questions are usually difficult for students because the passage can be really convoluted and a lot of the times the questions aren't actually direct content. They are from the passage, they'll be related to the passage, whether that be the experiment or the data or just something that was mentioned in the passage coupled with a concept that you should be familiar with for the MCAT. And unfortunately, what happens to a lot of students in this section is they come in with this wonderful database of knowledge about biology and biochemistry and, uh, and chemistry, of course. And they end up using a bit too much background knowledge, which sounds weird because you must be thinking, I mean, if you knew everything, then that would be perfect, right? But for some questions that are more passage-based rather than content-based, this can actually hurt you because you're kind of diving deeper for the specifics and you're racking your brain for this really niche uh, information about the topic that you're being asked about, when in reality, the MCAT is asking you something way more simplified than what you're really looking for in that moment. And it's easy to get caught in that rabbit hole when you think, oh, but that one word that they used, maybe that is actually related to this other concept that's closely related, kind of like the way that cars makes you think. But this passage can be your best friend because it's really just the coded answers are often right in front of you, similar with cars, except usually a little bit easier for students just because a lot of people do have that ability to understand science concepts, maybe a little bit easier than uh, the abstract concepts in cars. So I really started looking at the passage not as something that is going to be convoluted, difficult to understand, and therefore something I don't wanna read, but actually something that was just a puzzle or a code that I had to decipher in order to figure out where are the answers within this? Let's shake them out of this passage because I know they are there. And it'll be confusing and difficult when you start, but the more that you go into each passage thinking the answers are here, I know what I'm doing, and I just need to make sure that I don't overthink and kind of overstretch my knowledge to the point where I'm making a question way more complicated than it needs to be. So that is something that I started to do, which is a bit abstract to explain, but don't be too intimidated. You know what you're doing. You have the background and start simple and work your way up if needed, not the other way around. Another strategy that I really focused on in my retake was understanding the format of the bio biochemistry section. And there's a few different types of passage that passages that they'll show. And of course, you never know exactly what they're going to give you. But overall, there are patterns. And if you identify those patterns, then you can get more comfortable with them, even if they first come across as intimidating. So for example, some of my students who hadn't taken biochemistry in a long time or hadn't taken it yet, or were just not that confident in this course or in biology or you know related courses that are important for this section, they might have felt pretty unfamiliar with the formatting. A big thing that came up quite a few times, and you might think this is super easy and super simple, but this is just an example of something you'll see in the sections, is uh, something like E127A when they're describing an experiment. That type of format comes up all the time, as you know, with the letters and the posi positions switched. And if you weren't aware the first few times that maybe you took a practice test or were looking at some practice questions, that all that is saying is that alanine has substituted in for glutamate, where glutamate is normally the amino acid at position 127, and they have simply swapped. And nothing else in the protein has changed. No other amino acid has been swapped unless otherwise specified. 
if they just say 120 E127A. That is the only switch. And so that means, what are we looking at then? So we're looking at, did that make the protein non-functional? Because in that case, that means glutamate was really important. Did it make it even better? Okay, well maybe alanine is involved in some interaction that's improving protein to protein interactions or something like that. So try to make sure that if there's something that's confusing you when you're reading uh, these passages and you're noticing it comes up every once in a while like that format, then don't just brush it off and think, oh, I kind of understand that, whatever, and move on. Take the time to understand it. Look it up, speak to some friends who maybe are a little bit more confident with that type of format and make sure you just figure it out and don't move on. Uh, something similar is that uh, catalytic efficiency, KCAT. I had a lot of students who are actually never taught that in their biochemistry courses. And this came up a lot in the data points. And maybe it wasn't a, a straight content question, but if you don't understand what KCAT is, you can't really interpret the data. So things like that. If you see things coming up that are forming patterns and you're noticing, I'm not really confident with this, make sure you take the time to understanding the format because it'll come up over and over again and it'll just keep confusing you. So that is the second strategy. A third strategy that I used is I stopped looking at concepts as separate and you know having them on my flashcards and saying, okay, what happens during glycolysis? And I write up glycolysis and that's wonderful. I memorized glycolysis and that is a good thing, something that all students should do. But did I really understand glycolysis in terms of the entire cell? And the answer is no. I knew glycolysis, I knew every enzyme, I knew every substrate, but I still almost knew nothing about it because I was looking at it too separately and not as the macro big picture in terms of why is this even important in the cell? So what I ended up doing is I had a whiteboard, which I would highly encourage you buying if you don't have one. There's really affordable ones at Target for one or two dollars in the kids sections. And um, what I would do is I would write out a, a massive cell. I'd draw it a big one. And I'd put glycolysis in the cytosol where it belongs. And if I had a big enough whiteboard, I'd write out the whole thing. Otherwise, I would just do some of the key uh, substrates, enzymes, that kind of thing, and the final product of pyruvate. And then I draw an arrow from pyruvate and where does pyruvate go after glycolysis? It goes into the PDH. And I would actually write that. I would draw that arrow of it going to the PDH, the pyruvate going there. And what happens in the PDH? I would then write that. Where does that go after? Into the TCA. How is that related to the shuttles within the mitochondria? How is that related to gluconeogenesis and the pentose phosphate pathway? And these were connections that I hadn't made in my mind before. And the thing is that Everything is interconnected within the cell, within the human body. And if, if you don't look at things as connected, you won't be able to draw the connections that MCAT wants you to draw because they want your brain to look at it from a very macro view of how are these all related? They don't want it to be simply separated because then you could just memorize it. And where's the understanding in that? So I know it's a lot of information and it might be overwhelming at first, but draw everything out if that works for you. Maybe watch a video if that doesn't work for you. Uh, see them as connected and start applying that connection when you're reading the passages in bio biochem. Usually they will pull not just one concept, but multiple related concepts. So when you're reading the passage or you're reading the question, think, okay, I know how these are related and maybe even draw to other things that they could ask you later on because you know that there's a very closely related topic that they didn't bring up yet. Maybe that'll be the next question. So start getting your mind rolling in terms of these patterns and what's next and what is related to that. Is there something I haven't considered that's also an important factor in this? So start thinking everything is connected. <laughs> So another strategy that, shame on me, I didn't use for my first MCAT test was mnemonics. And these are just such an easy way to help memorizing pathways, you know, speaking of pathways. And a couple of the ones that I use just to, you know, give you a taste, which I'm sure you've heard of similar ones, is, you know, for the TCA, I said, can I keep some succinate for myself? So C, I, K, on and on are the, the, the first letter of what we're looking at. Uh, for the substrate and then there's another one for the enzymes and for glycolysis i used goodness gracious uh father franklin didn't go buy perfect for perfect pumpkins to prepare pies 
mouthful. There's a lot of P's towards the end and there's a lot of different ones. But if you haven't used this, I'd say just do it. Pick one that you think is funny. Pick one that you're going to remember because even if you know the TCA and glycolysis like the back of your hand, it is so nerve wracking being there on test day and you're sitting there and you're going, oh my God, I know this. Why am I blanking on this? Don't make that mistake. Just make sure that you know these pathways and mnemonics are huge for that. And when you're using mnemonics for enzymes, not substrates, but enzymes, think about what the enzyme is actually doing. Don't just memorize it. So let's say you know uh, citrate synthase is an enzyme that you're looking at. And the reason why you know that is because the mnemonic has the letter C. That's wonderful. I'm glad you memorized that. But what is a synthase? Uh, really, what will the product look like? Could you draw it? So if it's a dehydrogenase, what is happening? We know that our reactant is going to have a hydrogen removed from it and given to a product. So this happens really, really often uh, with NAD and NADH, with dehydrogenases. Uh, you can think about the same thing with kinase. We know we're going to have a phosphate and an ATP involved. So what should our pro product look like knowing that a kinase is something that involves phosphate and ATP? And if you know your substrate, could you draw the product? So try not to memorize, actually think about what are they doing and does this make sense? Because it should make sense. And if it's not following, then maybe there's something going wrong in the way that you're thinking about that enzyme or maybe the way that you pictured that substrate is wrong. And so it'll help you to make sure you truly understand these pathways, not just memorize the pathways. Now, the last strategy I'm going to talk about is graphs. So graphs are everywhere on BioBioChem and not just graphs, but also, you know, tables, just basically something that's drawn to show the data. And a lot of the times these are really confusing. Not always, sometimes they're very simple, but many times you'll just look at it and you'll think, what am I even looking at? There's like a million different points and bars and there's so much going on what is truly happening here. And before you get bogged down by the details, the first thing that I always did is just take a look at the X and Y axis before I even look at anything. Whether I look at something that's screaming out as being significant, I just ignore it. I think it doesn't matter because I don't know what I'm looking at until I take a good look at the X and Y axes. And sometimes even these axes can be confusing. They'll use 10 words to describe it and you're thinking, oh my gosh, what is this even saying? You should have said this in a lot less words. But if you don't understand at a macro level what the graph is measuring or the table or the data point, then you will never be able to figure out the information you need to draw from it because you won't fully be able to interpret that graph. And graph interpretation is huge for BioBioChem. And this is true for PsychSoc as well. So similar points here with those two sections. So take the time to look at these axes and if you're still really confused after the axes, there's usually an explanation in the passage, either right above or right below the graph. And usually it'll say, you know, figure one and give a brief description. So see if that helps you to figure out what is actually going on here. Um, if you're struggling with graphs, which I know some students do because they are tough, spend time with them during your practice and when you're actually taking it. And especially during your review, if you are still stumped, Figure out why, what was messing you up, and how could you avoid that in the future? What could have clued you in that maybe is a pattern that you can recognize in the future? You unfortunately can't escape them, so spend time with them if you're struggling. So as I've said, this section, BioBioChem, gives you coded help in the passage, and you just need enough practice to figure out how to decipher it, and you are golden. So make sure you know your amino acids, kinetics, viruses, bacteria, cold for this section so that content really isn't an issue. And otherwise, hopefully some of these strategies were helpful for you. So if you liked this video, if you found it helpful, we have several other mentors on the MCAT Mastery team uh, that have really worked on mastering chem phys, bio, biochem sections of the MCAT. And there's also a section within um, our course that I can walk you through a ton of different practice problems of bio biochem. I'll show you how to dissect the passages and really what you need to take from them. Uh, look at question stems, charts, figures, and answer choices. So I do a deep dive into this to really help you uh, with some of these strategies amongst others that I discuss in the course. 
So if you're interested in checking that out, then I will include a link below. And of course, if you feel like you need more one-on-one -on -one help to uh, really get the ball rolling on your studying, then we are always available for tutoring. So it was lovely to have you. You are doing amazing and I will see you for the next video. Bye.